think everybody likes the rain, right? Yes. Yes. No? I do. You don't like the rain? I mean, a lot of rain. Lots of rain, yeah. absolutely. Water in the plants. Get your nice and Nobody works outside, right? Good. All right. We're all good. Praise the Lord for the rain this week. So, supposed to get more tomorrow. Amen. Oh, no. Oh, no. You don't like the rain? No, I won't. You're from Mississippi, bro. Oh, that's no. This is it rain in Mississippi. Oh, yes, it does. Every yeah. day. Every day. I was saying, you, you, you know rain. Oh, yes. Very much I know rain, but I, I'm going to have to be doing a truck tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You'll be outside in the rain. Mm-hmm. All right. We've got a few uh, jokes for you this morning because a wait. Oh, Lord, the bed jokes. Uh, not sure if my wife didn't hear me say I was coming down with a cold or if she's ignoring me. Yes, I'll just have to remind her 67 more times. That's the guy. No, that's the woman to the man. That's the, it's reversed. Husband, what's for dinner? Wife, nothing. Husband, we had nothing last night. Wife, I know. I made enough for two days. Here we go. Here's some eggplants. I wish it was that easy. I think I'm approaching my best if used by date. I think I'm approaching my best if used by date. Joke's on you, I never respond. <laughs> and where do you learn how to make ice cream? No. Sunday. Oh. Sunday school, of course. Those of you who, those of you who miss out on Sunday school know what you're missing out on. So. Ice cream on there. All right, into our announcements this morning. So if you take your bulletin, I've got some corrections to make. And so uh, tonight, of course, 6 o'clock, is our uh, Family Fun Fellowship. And after our prayer time, we'll uh, spend some time playing board games. If you want to bring a board game or whatever to play. And then, of course, Wednesday, we have our youth outreach program. Desperately needing help in a few weeks. The Craigs aren't going to be there. As a matter of fact, they're going to miss three weeks this uh, semester. Uh, traveling and stuff for their ministry. So really could use extra help for that. Wednesday night is our Bible study. We'll pick up the book of Esther again. Had a good study last Wednesday. Look forward to another good study this week. And Saturday is a chair and pizza party. Uh, we're going to be putting chairs together that are in our office and eating pizza. And that starts at 10 o'clock. If you're available on Saturday, uh, bring a staple gun and a screwdriver We'll take off the old fabric and be putting on new fabric that Miss Jana made. And maybe, maybe by next Sunday there'll be no more red chairs in there. Uh, they'll all be the same color chairs. So if we have enough help to work. That's this Saturday at 10 o'clock. Then next Sunday is our church potluck, so you'll certainly want to be back for that. We'll talk about more of that at the end of service. Ladies night, February 6th here at church at 6. And then on the next announcement, if you have a pen... Make a note, it's not the 10th. It was the 3rd last week. Everybody wasn't at the 3rd last week. Well, I changed it to the 10th. And then my wife said, no, change it again. It's the 17th. So, it's the 17th. Still leave at 9.30. Still going shopping. And I believe having lunch at Panera Bread. So, same program, just a different day. And love to have the ladies have to come and join us for that. Here's two new things that I need to be kind of clear about. So give me just a couple minutes of time. Love More Sunday. Love More Sunday is coming up. You know our theme for the year is Love More in 2024. And so February is the love month. And so we're going to do something special in February. So number one thing we talked about last week in our leadership meeting is to do some special things for folks in our church. Okay? And so we spend a lot of money helping folks outside of our church. Now it's time in February for us to spend some money helping folks in our church. So, with that said, if you are here this morning, and you could use some financial help, whether it's groceries or bills or something else important, hey, we're going to help you. So come talk to me. Uh, also in the back, we have our leadership, Miss Carol and Miss Bonnie, uh, Miss Janine as well, and Miss Jana. If you are a person in our church and you could use some financial help in the month of February, is Love More Sunday. And 
No. I'll show you a new car. <laughs> But also on top of that, I'd also like to buy, um, I think it was $28 for these little chocolate hearts that you see at Walmart for a dollar or $2 probably now. I'd like to buy two of those and put them together with a gospel track that says Jesus loves you and an invitation to our church. And what I'm going to ask is that every person, every family take five of those and you pass them out. And let your neighbors know you'll give those little chocolate hearts. The church will pay for them. And uh, you're just going to hand those to your neighbors so that they know that Jesus loves them. And so uh, next two weeks from now, we're going to take up an offering on Sunday. Um, and that is normally called Benevolent Fund Offering. Mm -hmm. So our offering in the first February, the first Sunday of February, is going to be going to offset the cost of helping family members and folks in our church. And two, helping buy some of those chocolate boxes with chocolates and the tracks. And each person, if you don't come, I'm sorry, but each person is going to take five of those packages. And you're going to find five people in your street or in your neighborhood to pass those out to. And that's just an invitation to our church and more importantly, a gospel track to show the love of God. So love more Sunday. February 11th, we're going to help some church folks, and you're also going to leave here with a box of chocolates, uh, five of them, to go pass out to someone. Don't eat them at your own house. Uh, that's not how it's supposed to be. Can I eat one? Well, there's two. So, two boxes for you to take to your neighbors, um, and so that's what we're planning on doing in the month of February. So if you need help, please talk to me or uh, some of the leadership for our church and let us know your need. And uh, we're not going to tell who we gave the money to. We just have extra money in our um, benevolent fund that we would like to help people with. Okay? So I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I'm just going to say, hey, I have a need. Uh, this is the need. And we want to be a blessing to you. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to wait till February 11th to do it. Okay? If you need groceries today, uh, we will get you groceries today. Uh, we love helping folks. And that's how we're going to love for in 2024. All right, next passage there is the phone call ministry. Phone call ministry. Starting a new ministry, and uh, I'm obviously not going to be the header up of this because I don't like talking on the phone. Uh, so someone who has time and likes talking on the phone, this is what it is. It's just a phone call ministry. So that if someone is needs to talk to someone, okay, they have someone they can call. So what we're going to have is we're going to have two lists. One list is, I can take a phone call. Here's the hours I'm available to take a phone call. The other list will be that we give it to the folks who would like a phone call, or who, who are able to receive that phone call. So those who need a phone call will have a list of people they can call, and those who are able to make phone calls will have that. So on the back table back there is two papers. I can... Make calls. We fill that out, turn it into me, and probably by the, we'll give about four weeks of talking about this, and then we'll start it. But if you're feeling, like I have a few minutes a day or an hour a block that I'm available to receive a phone call if someone needs to call me, and uh, we'll try and make it at different times, and so that if someone needs to call someone in the morning, this person is available in the morning, someone needs to call someone in the afternoon, uh, someone needs someone to call someone in the evenings. Um, also, maybe you want a phone call from the pastor. I, I, I personally think that if, someone's, if the pastor's calling you, you think you're in trouble. Uh, but if you just want Pastor Cody to call you and chat, I am more than willing to do that. So on your paper, if you say, I'd like a phone call from the pastor every month, I will gladly call folks uh, once a month or once a week or whatever to, to call and chat with you. It's going to be a phone confession booth. Uh, there, are, there are days I won't be available, absolutely, but uh, I'm glad to help out in that area. So our phone call ministry is to help people who are depressed, discouraged, that just need someone to talk to. And uh, some people pay good money for to talk to psychiatrists when they could really just talk to a church member and pray with them and love them for 15 minutes and uh, save 20 bucks or how many other bucks to talk to a psychiatrist. And so, 
But uh, that's the phone call ministry we're starting. And uh, the papers are on the back table back there. If you can, take one. I would, I would love a phone call. Here's my phone number. And uh, after we get this through, I'll give you the paper that shows the numbers you can call. If you say, I would love to be the person that people call, I'll give you a list of people who would like phone calls. And you can help us out with that. Got it? Does that make it clear as mud? So we'll, we'll talk about that more over the next few weeks. But uh, that's the new ministry we're going to start and uh, try and get help with folks. So. All right, on to birthdays very quickly before we move to the praise time and the worship. Um, Cindy's birthday, I believe, is this week. Is that correct? Yes. Where is Cindy? Nursery. 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 Someone go get Cindy out of nursery, please, so we can sing happy birthday to her. Also, it is Christine's birthday, and so if she comes in late, we'll sing happy birthday to her. And as I told you, Evan, this morning in Sunday school, uh, Jen normally sits right here or so with her kids. Uh, Evan is a little one. I think he's turning five. So uh, you see, he is turning four. The accent of five years old. So he's a very good kid. We'll sing happy birthday to Cindy as soon as she. Uh, Evan is the 23rd. And then next week, we'll sing happy birthday to Adelaide. Is she here this morning? Hopefully yes. Adelaide will be here next, next week. Adelaide's... She's turned five, isn't she? She's turning five. 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 <laughs> oh my God. We'll see how it is. Adelaide. <laughs> next Sunday. Oh, Cindy's missing. She don't let. Oh, here she comes. The nursery kids tackled her down. Dad. All right, Miss Cindy, we're going to see happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday <laughs> to you.
Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. I'm a new person to your church. My brother in law brought me, but I don't know where he went. He must be outside. Um, I had a stroke and did not know it. All I know is I woke up and I could not feel the right side. I still have problems that I side drop in badly. But I know that God woke me up this morning and told me to come here. Oh, yeah. What is your name, ma'am? Christina Johnson. Christina. Praise the Lord for Christina being here and the guy got you through the stroke. Amen. Well, I'm not through yet. The doctor said, he said, I got a little more to go, but it's getting better. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Anything else to praise the Lord for this morning? Tavion? I actually got a call from my friend. He uh, made his dream trip to the pan. He's a he's actually an enlister right now, so this is motor for a minor expedition. We actually weren't sure if he'd make it back because we heard the street he was the place he was in wasn't the best. So he's so, doing good. Yeah, he got back after two weeks. Amen. Praise God for Tay's friend, Miss Yale. For God's promises that we can always rely on those and, and look at Him and for our answers. Amen. Praise the Lord for his promises. We talked about that last Sunday and how he will provide. He promises us a whole lot that he will take care of. Anybody else want to praise the Lord for this morning? Maybe? Praise the Lord for you. Praise the Lord for me? Oh. <laughs> Aww. Praise the Lord for you, that's for sure. That's it. <laughs> yes. Noah, did you want to praise? No. no. <laughs> Bob. Thanks for my wife and also the the Lord bless us with a place to stay while we're waiting to build our house. So it's just awesome. Amen. There's a phrase walking in the room. Miss Sandy was in the hospital last Sunday. And Yay! You know, she's walking in the door with Greg. Yay! It's good having you guys. Welcome. Welcome. Anything else to praise the Lord for this morning? Yes, ma'am, Stephanie. That he gives me the strength to like go to work, to work every day, and that I'm also like getting like a lot more like hours, and so I, and so I know that I like will have everything provided for me. Good. Yep. Awesome. Uh, praise the Lord for your dad taking you to work every day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Fred. Thank you. Requires a lot of patience, right? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Donnie? I praise God that I have a decent church to go to Amen. Praise the Lord for a decent church. God is good. We praise God if you're here. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor prayed for Jana and uh, for Sandy that they would be here next Sunday. And look at you guys, you're here. I just hey, praise the Lord. Yes. There is answer. Yes. 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 Proof. Don't say pastor's prayer. It wasn't pastor's well, prayer. It's probably your prayer. Or Mr. Or Mr. Prayer. Yeah. prayer. Yeah. Sandy, you got praise. Uh, praise you guys praying for me. Thank you. I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. Praise feeling better? You feeling better? Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. All right, awesome. That's awesome. So good to have 10 praises on our prayer sheet. It's awesome to have God answering prayers. So God is powerful and he provides. Amen? Amen. 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 So we'll go ahead and flip to prayer time and talk about some other things we could pray for that I got. Alan. Oh, can we please have a prayer for Allie? She's got pneumonia. For Allie? She's got pneumonia? All right, absolutely. Christina, for your brother Jason. Yeah, he he got the flu. <clears throat> All right, we'll pray for Jason and yeah. Allie. Absolutely. And let's pray just as passionately for Allie and for Jason as we pray for Jana and Sammy. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anything else we can add to the prayer sheet, honey? Charity for family members, for uncles, not 
not doing well, and the brother, and so. Anything else we can pray for this week? All right, um, in Sunday school, we added under Carol's name, she was right under Carol, her nephews that are in jail, so praying for her nephews. Cindy asks us to pray for her, for comfort. She's having some rough days here. So Cindy, for comfort, for herself. Under Gail, she asks us to pray for her, I think it was her niece that passed away. But uh, we're praying for Pat, for her comfort. Mom. Her mom. And so those were the, of course, that we added Allie and Jason as well. So, Thank you. Alan? Yes, put on one more, please. Uh, unspoken for uh, family. Please, thank you. Unspoken for family and for Alan. Yes, sir, Alan. Anything else we can pray for? All right, do a couple folks to help me with the offering this morning after prayer. Fred, Bob, all right. So just after we pray this morning, Bob and Fred will help us with the offering. Praise the Lord for your guys' faithfulness and giving. So let's just spend a few minutes, and just as I said last week, folks, as passionately as we pray for our dear friends, Ms. Jana, and Sandy, and Cindy to be here, uh, let's passionately pray for these folks. That God would do a great work, and so that next week we have just as much to praise the Lord for. So let's pray and ask God to bless you. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you so much for your love, for our salvation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you so much for your promises that you promised us. And Lord, it's so good to look at the life of Abraham and see the promises you promised him. And Lord, how you performed each and every one of those promises for him. And Lord, you promised us so many things as well. And God, we trust that those promises are going to come to fruition. But Lord, as we talked about this morning, Lord, we just have to wait for them. And trust and have faith and remain to have hope. Our hope is in you, that you will provide those promises for us. Lord, thank you so much for answering our prayers last week for Cindy, for Sandy, and for Jana. God, they were sick and out last week, but this week they're here and feeling better. Yes. And God, prayer works. God, thank you for answering our prayers. Lord, we know that your hand is upon them. Help us to pray this week for these other folks that, Lord, you heal and strengthen their bodies. Lord, next Sunday, we'd all come in again with many praises. God, answer this prayer. God, answer that prayer. And, uh, Lord, we'll just thank you for your goodness for it. Lord, we pray you just bless our church folks and uh, pray for our members, even those that are not here this morning, that you bring them in. For our leadership, Lord, for our services, our youth ministry, so thankful for the good group of kids we have to minister to and continue to help us to reach the youth. Pray for our building or for revival in our lives. Look for the needs of our church, so we need a music leader to help us with our music ministry. We need a youth couple to minister to the teenagers, our deacons, for our kids' class help, and Lord, for the financial help to provide for our budget. Lord, pray for our church, our folks, these needs. Lord, pray for our nation, what our nation needs you. Uh, Lord, we've said of ourselves, we are one nation under God, and Lord, that is our motto of our nation. Lord, it seems like many of our folks of our country have forgotten Lord, many folks in church have forgotten that. Lord, help us to have a church that, Lord, truly loves our nation and prays for our nation. Father, we would just continue to do our part to reach our city and our town with the gospel and the love of God. And, Lord, would you revive churches all across this nation, that they, too, would have a passion for their town and a passion for the lost, that we'd see revival across our country. Lord, hope is not found in the next president, whoever they may be. Lord, hope is found in Jesus. Lord, I do pray for our leaders, Lord, we need godly leaders. And I pray still, God, that you'd raise up a godly president for our country that loves the Lord and loves people. Lord, for our local and for other officials, God, that the nation, godly, good people would run for, politics, for, for, uh, for offices. Lord, we'd have godly, good people in our offices. Lord, I pray that you'd just bless our nation. Pray for folks around the world, Lord, that you'd send more and more laborers for gospel witness. Believers that being persecuted, God. We pray for our shut-ins this morning, dear folks that came 
can't come because of their health is Judy and Charlene. I've got to believe we're going to have to add Miss Peggy Ovaldo to that list because she's really a hurting and praying for healing and strength in them. Plus Carol's request this morning for wisdom and for family and for her nephews, for the boys, for their job situation, Don, Ed, Kathy, Donnie, and Claudia. Bless Charity and our family. God help Charity with these headaches to go away. Little Zoe for Josiah's eyes. Pray for his appointment, especially next week, for wisdom there. Uh, Father, for our home purchase. God, that you provide us with a home that's just right for us. And the Lord, the right price that's just going to be perfect. Pray, God, just be with Peggy of all those. Uh, Lord, for Jana. Pray for her ankle and back. That you give her relief from her pain. And, uh, Lord, for Rebecca Shirley. For Cindy, for Marissa, Rosia, Brittany. For Dave. Cornell family. I love to pray, especially this week for uh, Cindy, that you comfort her heart. Bless Rain and for her mom, Christine, for their health and healing today, and for Sandy and Greg's healing, and for their salvation, for Chuck and Richard. Bless Vida's health and for her family, and God watch over Tom and Matt and Candy today, and Charlotte, for her family be saved. Uh, we'll watch over Bob and Gail for their house, uh, we'll for Bob's job and travel safety, for Ashley, their uh, granddaughter. Lord, especially this week for Jim and Patty, and the Lord, their friend Pat, that he's comforted this time. For Kat, for her health, and for Daniel, and Dylan, Ray, and Molly, for Fred, and May, and for strength, and bless their family, and uh, Lord, for Donnie, for his health and healing, and for Joy, and David, for Chanel, for her daughter, her mom, be with her friend Tisha, for work, and for housing, and for Peggy, for uh, Lord, her fiance, Don, that you heal and take away his leukemia. Bless Janine's son, Darren, and Father, for her friend, Brooklyn. Uh, grandma was sick last week, and she's doing well. Be with her friend, Ben, and heal and strengthen him. And, uh, Lord Allen's unspoken request for Leroy, Kat, Donnie, Tom, Daniel, for Sandy, Tisha, Bob, and Charity. Bring for Charity's family. Uh, Lord Allen asks another unspoken request as well. And asks us to pray for Allie, for healing for Simonia. Lord, just take this one problem away and heal her body quickly. For Christina's uh, uh, Jason, that you heal him, strengthen him today, we pray. Be with our missionaries, Lord, I pray for the Malou family in Thailand to minister and reach folks there. The Love Grove to the Bundys in Ethiopia. Bless the Hazlitt to the Dominican Republic and the Nieces in the Philippines. The Craig family to the Burnett, Bishop of Dignity. Camp Ironwood, pray for Daniel Kim, James Kim, and Robbie Yap as they start these churches. Lord, bless the McCollum family as they travel. Uh, Lord, just the next few months they get the support they need to get to Germany. Think my friend Randy, as he's uh, we're still very short on support to get to Japan. That you give him the support and save the safety he needs to, to get to Japan to witness those folks there. That be with our missionaries all across the world. Finally, Lord, we pray for this offering we're about to receive. Thank you for how you bless our church. And Lord, bless our folks. Our prayer continue to bless them. Lord, as you bless them, God, I pray there'll be a blessing in this church. God, that we use this money to help and to minister. And Lord, to be wise about this money that you give us. Lord, we have a passion to help, a passion to reach the lost with this money. And uh, Lord, for our missions giving, that we have more opportunity to support more missionaries this year. And, uh, Lord, just thank you for those that give. And uh, Lord, bless this offering, we pray. Thank you for all you do. Bless this service. Speak to our hearts. Bless Junior Church this morning, and Children's Church as well. I'm so thankful for the children you bring us. Bless the teachers that teach. Give them good classes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fred, Bob, and Bob, and Bob.
Yeah, I'm just what you are. 
Uh, this morning we're going to be talking about waiting. And so in the coaster of life, there's much waiting. God's doing his part. And as we wait, folks, we need to honor him, help others, be humble, and just be happy. And I uh, look forward to looking at Abraham's response this morning to that. So we're getting into week number three of Abraham. Uh, we'll finish it up next week and get into our next character in the book of, uh, in the month of February. So uh, just refresher for those who have been out for a few weeks. Genesis chapter 12 is the beginning of the story of Abraham. God comes to Abraham and asks him, says, I have a plan for you. I need a person. Abraham accepted it. God offered him quite a few perks for following this plan. Abraham was required to leave. This path was not going to be easy, but God was in charge. We know, we understand, when Abraham got off the path, there were problems. And from the first week of the story of Abraham, we understand that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. If you are alive this morning, it's not by accident. God has a purpose and a plan for you. You have to understand, as we're going to talk about this morning, it will not be as peaceful as you plan. It is not a true biblical statement that the more you love God, the closer you are to God, that the better things are going to be in your life. Uh, that's the prosperity gospel. Give more to the church, give more to God, and God will give you more. That's not true. You don't find that in the Bible. In fact, it gets worse the closer you get to God. Sometimes, absolutely. We see that, right? In the life of Jesus, the life of Paul, the life of Peter, all right, in the Old Testament, the life of David, the life of the prophets, these folks were persecuted. It wasn't as peaceful as they promised, but God gave them the power to go forward. Folks, there will be many other pleasant things presented to those that will be patient and perform well. And so we ended the first week on listen to the Spirit of God. Leave the things that He's asking you to leave. Live for Him and just last. Just keep doing it day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. Last for God. When we did a Genesis 15 last week, and we looked at God promising to Abraham again. He comes to Genesis 15, he says, I am thy shield, Abraham and thy exceeding great reward. And Abraham, instead of trusting God, he what? Doubts. He still has questions, he still doesn't understand, because he, like us, has a small perspective of life. All I can see is what's in front of me. God gives him another pep talk. God says to him, listen, I've got this, I'm going to take care of you. God reminds him about the past provisions, and Abraham eventually finds peace in the present, just at this time. And he said this, Abraham believed the Lord, and he counted unto him for righteousness. So that's where we ended last week. Abraham now just needs to remain pure and patiently wait for the rewards. So that's Genesis chapter 15. And so this week, uh, Tom, uh, my friend Tom here, says I talk too fast. And many of you would agree, correct? All right. So talk too fast is when you actually read the Bible quotes. So Tom said this morning, and I agree. If you need to get up and leave this morning, because I'm preaching through four chapters of Scripture, uh, listen, if you got to go somewhere, you won't hurt my feelings, okay? Uh, but I'm going to tell you straight from the beginning of this, I have a lot to talk about. And so I hope that you will stay patient with me as I walk through these passages of Scripture, because every single one of us in here are waiting for God. And the wait is not fun. But listen, there's some things in the wait that God has for us to learn. And so as we go through this, I'm going to go slower. All right? I'm going to try to purposely go a little slower this morning, which unfortunately means that it's going to be a little longer. So be patient with me. And if you do have to go, you're not going to fit me. Go. Leave. Uh, go what you need to do and watch it on YouTube or go back and watch it on Facebook. Uh, to catch up with what was going on. So let's read Genesis. We're not going to read the whole passage. We're just going to go through parts of it. But Genesis 16 to 21 is talking about the uh, waiting period of Abraham's life. And what's going on in this waiting period. And so the theme that the sermon title this morning is not wilting while waiting. Not wilting 
while waiting. While God has promised to provide, while God has given us a vision, and yet he still continues to say, wait, we don't get off the path. We don't give up. We stay true to the Lord. And so in Abraham's life, chapter 16, uh, the very first thing we're going to look at is Abraham wandered while he was waiting. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 16, remember, we don't know the time frame. It doesn't say what age Abraham was in Genesis 15. Genesis 16, you think it wouldn't be too long, Abraham's getting himself into trouble. God said, I have a son prepared for you. Sarah's going to give birth. I have a plan for you. Here it is. But in 16, Abraham wanders from God's path. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bare him no children. And she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. <coughs> and Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. She said, I'm too old. I can't have kids anymore. I pray thee, go to my maid, my young maid here, that you may obtain children by her. Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. And Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to husband Abraham to be his wife. And he went unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she conceived, she, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Verse 15 and 16 says, And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his name, which is Hagar, bare Ishmael. And Abram was four score and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. Four score and six, that's 86. And 75, when God came and said, Leave, and I'll promise you a blessing. That was Genesis chapter 12. Last week we looked at Genesis 15, where God says, Abraham, I've got something special for you. Just wait on it. And God, and God said, Abraham believed. And then somewhere along the line, in his waiting, from that time, to 86 years old, he said, all right, God, I'm going to take things into my own hand. And instead of having a child through Sarai, which God promised, he had a child through his mistress, Hagar. And they named that son Ishmael. Abram thought, this is what God had planned all along. He wasn't going to give me a child through Sarai, like he said. He's going to give me a child through Hagar. And sure enough, folks, we know now through history how big of a mistake that wandering was. Ishmael moved. His tribe eventually became the nation that produced Mohammed, which is now the Islam faith. And who do you have fighting in the promised land today? Muhammad, Jewish, those that are from Ishmael, and those that are from Isaac, the Jews, God's chosen people. Thousands of years later, folks, while Abraham was waiting on God, and instead of trusting and doing right, he wandered from the truth. And he went and did and made a mistake. That mistake is still causing world problems today. Think about that, folks. It seemed like the right thing to do. That makes sense. Here's a young woman. I'm going to marry her, and I'm going to have a kid with her. And that's the one that God had promised me all along. But that wasn't what God said. And folks, while he was waiting on God, he wandered from the principles and the truth that God presented him. And it got him in trouble. It got chaos into his family. And it's still bringing problems today. Next we're going to read about in waiting. God gave Abraham a wait. In waiting, while Abraham's waiting for God to provide him a son, God's going to give him something to test him. A wait, per se. And in Genesis chapter 17, it tells us the story of circumcision. The story, the principle of circumcision. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, he was 78, I'm sorry, 86 when we last saw him. Now he's 99 years old. 13 years later, God comes to him and says, Abram, 
I am the mighty God who walked before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between thee and would multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant was with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thou shalt be called Abraham. So now he's no longer being called Abram. He is now Abraham in God's sight. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make of thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and I see after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee. And I see after thee, and I will give it to thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land whereon thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and their seed after thee for generations. This shall be my covenant. This shall be the weight which ye shall keep between you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token between the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in a house or brought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house, and he that is brought with thy money must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh an everlasting covenant. And so very quickly, let me just stop and pause and explain. God comes to Abram, he's 99 years old, and says, Abram, I'm going to change your name. You've been faithful now. You, you've made a mistake. You've got things right. Abram, I have a task for you while you're waiting. Oh, oh, I'm going to ask that you get circumcised at 99 years old. Wow. Okay? Uh, you think your day's bad? You think what God has for you is a little difficult? All right? Imagine being 99 years old and God says, hey, cut, cut. This is my covenant. Not only are you going to cut, cut, but you're going to cut, cut everybody, every man in your house. And everyone that's born at 8 years old, you're going to have a, a little fun time with the circumcision here. Sounds kind of fun, right? Sounds like a loving, good God, right? How could a loving, good God tell all men, cut, cut? That doesn't seem very fun. You're right. But folks, God had a plan and a purpose for that. And God said to Abram, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and I will give thee a son of her. Of who? Sarai, not Hagar. Abraham, I told you, it wasn't Hagar that was going to give you a son that was going to be the seed that would be blessed forever. It was from Sarah. And now her name is Sarah, and I'm going to give you a seed. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is nine years old bear? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, will bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him, I will ask for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and I will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Which he did. It wasn't his plan. Remember, God's perfect plan was through Isaac. But God said, because I promised you a blessing, Abraham, not only am I going to bless Isaac, but I'm going to bless Ishmael. And to this day, they are blessed. And twelve princes shall you get, and I'll make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, and which Sarah shall bear to thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with God, and went up to Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born of his house, and all that were brought with his money, every male of the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin, the self same day as God had said to him. And Abraham was nine years old and nine. He was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And folks, once again, 99 years old, waiting for God to give him a son, God brings a trial, God brings a difficulty into his life. That doesn't sound very good, it doesn't sound very pleasant. Well, 
Does God promise that everything's going to be perfect and pleasant for us as we wait? No. No. There's going to be wait. There's going to be tests. There's going to be things that we're going to have to do for God to prove our faithfulness. <coughs> and sure enough, what did he do? Right after God said, go cut, he what? Wind cut. And it was painful, and it wasn't pleasant, and only did he do it, he made everybody in his land, his, his station, his little <coughs> whatever, say, do it. And he obeyed. And now we see this. In Abraham's wait, God was in wonder. Now God is wow between Abraham's worship and his walk. And so that brings us to chapter 18. Chapter 18 in Genesis, it says, And said, My Lord, now if I have found favor, God comes to me again. I pray thee, let thy servant let a little water and be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. So I know he set up the issue there because I skipped the first three verses for some reason. Abraham's 99 years old, sitting out in front of his tent, drinking his sweet tea, whatever he's drinking, okay? And as he's drinking his cup, God in the flesh appears with two other angels. And they're on their way, the Bible says, to go destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And while God in the flesh, uh, what we would call a pre-incarnate Jesus, you say, what do you mean God in the flesh? Well, God is in three forms. God is a physical form that looks just like you and me. God is in his heavenly form, which is grand. Physically, it says his earth is his footstool. There's a, a, a physical God. There's the God that's in heaven. And then there's the spirit God. You say, well, there's three gods. No, there's one God, Jehovah. Three different forms. Just as you are three different forms today. You are a physical being that I can see. You are a spirit inside of you. And also you are a soul. You are a three form being as well. God is in three forms. A physical form, which we see here. Physically in front of Abraham. Abraham looks at this physical form and says, you're God. And there are two angels with him. And, and Abram says, hey, don't you leave my house. I'm going to feed you, and I'm going to spend some time with you. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort your hearts after ye shall pass on. Therefore come to your servant. And they said, so do, as thou hast said. And Abram hastened to the tent to Sarah and made ready quickly three measures of fine meal, netted, and cakes upon the earth. And Abraham ran to the herd and fetched a calf. That's a southern word, fetched. I like that word. And a tender good, and gave it to young men, and hastened to dress it. And took butter and milk, and the calf which he had dressed, and set before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. So Abraham sees God in the flesh with two angels. Uh, they're walking, as we're going to see at the end of this, to Sodom and Gomorrah to judge it, to destroy it. And on their way, as they pass by Abraham's house, Abraham's like, God, come in and spend some time with me. Wouldn't you just love that day? Amen? How many of you, if Jesus was walking down the road, would love for him to come and spend some time with you? Amen? Amen. That's what Abraham got to do here. Jesus is walking down the road, and he gets to come spend time with God. And eat with him. And here's the rest of the story. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard in her tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after man with women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, being Lord also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child, which am I am too old? And get this, folks, I wish I, this is a whole sermon itself, but it's not my sermon this morning. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. No. Sarah thought, there's no way I could have a child. All right? Kind of like you, Miss Janet, thought there's no way I would be able to get out of bed again. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Is there anything too hard for God? No. no. Can a nine-year-old woman have a baby? God wants to. Absolutely. Can a virgin have a baby? Absolutely. If God wants to, it can happen. God makes us like that from the dust of the ground. God spoke, and what happened? The planets. Right? If he can speak planets into existence, can he speak a baby into uh, Sarah? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely he could do that. Remember when Jesus was in his lifetime? 
He's like, hey, we've got five loaves and two fish. How are we going to feed so many people? What did Jesus do? He prayed and he broke the bread. And out of nothing came something. Only God can do that. Out of nothing came something. Out of nothing came something. Again and again and again. Until the 5,000 men and women and children, plus probably 10,000 people, were fed with five loaves and two fish. How? Because there's nothing too hard for God. And while Abraham is waiting for God, God says, I've still got a plan for you. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. And we're going to get back to that word in a little bit. And Sarah shot a son. And Sarah denied said, I, I did not laugh, I was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. And the man rose from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with him to bring him on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed with him. And here's the verse I want to get to. Folks, I hope this is said about us. For I know, God says, I know Abraham will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. God looks at Abraham and says, I know Abraham. He's going to follow me. He's learned his lessons. He's been through a lot of hardships. But in his 25 years of waiting, I know Abraham's going to do right by me. And folks, in Abraham's wait <coughs> on God, God was in wonder and impressed at his worship and his walk. Folks, somewhere along the line, Abraham got it. It made sense. Okay? This is what God wants from me? I did it, God. And how old was he when it made sense to him? 99 years old. So there's hope for you yet, amen? amen? I still don't get it. Well, Abraham didn't get it until he was 99. And somewhere along the line, God, Abraham got it and understood it. God says, do I do. If God says, don't I don't. If God says, jump I jump. If God says, kneel I kneel. And he got it. God says, look at my servant Abraham. I'm wondering at his waiting in patience. And folks, after 25 years, 75 years old when he was promised, 100 years old of waiting, 25 years of waiting, God did a wondrous work in his life. 25 years, folks. 25 years. <laughs> Genesis 21. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did it to Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived to bear Abraham a son in his old age. The set time which God had spoken to him, Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him. Who bare to him? Sarah, not Hagar. God promised him to come from Sarah, and sure enough, it came from Sarah. And called him Isaac. Abraham, what did he do? He sort of precise him. Being eight days old, just as God said to do it, he did it. And Abraham was a hundred years old when the son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all who hear me laugh with me. Folks, after 25 years of waiting, God did a wondrous work. Amen? How many of you need God to do a wondrous work in your life? Amen? Does God promise it's going to happen tomorrow? No. no. Does he promise that he's going to bless you? Does he promise he's going to be with you? Yes. Is it something that he has personally promised you in your life? Listen, it may not happen tomorrow. You may have to wait 25 years like Abraham did. But there is a wondrous work, folks, that God wants to do. We just need to wait patiently on him. And not wilt. Not wilt while we're waiting. Abraham wandered a little bit. He got off the path a little bit and he's still paying for it today. But folks, eventually, somewhere along the path, Abraham got to become a wonder to God. And a beautiful flower, a beautiful thing that God was... I know that he's going to raise his children, right? Because he loves me. And he's faithful to me now. Folks, my desire this morning is for us to understand the waiting. Let's apply it to our life. Our waiting begins... After we are washed from our sins. Our waiting for God. Our waiting, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for what? Heaven. That's what we're waiting for. Those of us that are saved, we're waiting for that blessed hope called heaven. 
Thou, Lord, shouldest bark and it please, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. What are we waiting for? Those of us that are washed, those of us that have been our sins forgiven, we're waiting for heaven. Peter says this, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as of silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by the tradition of your fathers, what are we washed? We are redeemed by the blood of Christ, as a lamb without spot and blemish. Folks, without God's salvation, without His mercy and His forgiveness, all that we're waiting for, if we don't have the washing, redemption, all we're waiting for is more pain. If you're here this morning, and you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, you're going to wait through this entire life, all the pain, all the trials, all the discouragement, all those things that I have to go through and you have to go through, you're going to go through without any hope. And you're going to go through without God. How miserable that is when God says, I will give you rest. I will give you salvation. I will be there with you. Just receive me as your father and make me your Lord. Folks, without salvation, all you're waiting for in this life is more pain. Because I believe there's a little hell waiting for those that will not repent and ask for forgiveness. But those that are saved this morning, we're waiting for paradise. Two rows. Death is certain. There's hell <clears throat> and heaven. Pain, paradise. And those of us that are saved, we're waiting for paradise. Heaven for eternity. Amen? Amen. We're on the flip side of that, folks. Those that are not saved this morning, all you're waiting for is more pain and more misery. What a life to live. I cannot imagine that if I hadn't got saved at 15 years old, how miserable I would be today at 38. And I'm just 38. Can't wait till I'm 68. My entire life living without any hope. Living without any joy. Living without any power. Without any of God's presence. What a shame that would be to reject God. But at 15 years old, I accepted his free gift of salvation. And from that day forward, God has been with me every step of the way. Has it been easy? No. Has there been pain? Yeah. But every bit of pain, every little trial, as God's hand strengthened me and encouraged me and got me through it. Oh. Folks, what a wonderful promise it is that God has for us that are waiting. In our walk, in our wait with God, there will be much waiting. And in our waiting, folks, we must not wilt. Psalm 37, 4 through 9 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evildoers shall be cut off. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. They shall have heaven. Folks, in our waiting, we must not wilt. Well, why is God blessing them? And why are they prospering when, when they don't even believe in God? And why is it that the richest people on earth are all sinful people who don't even believe in God? I looked at the list this week. Elon Musk. Um, uh, yeah, they're all their names. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and... Uh, that is a guy. That's, no. What is it? Uh, America's richest. Elon Musk. And then there's the other guy who's investing. Gates? Bill Gates? No, the investor guy. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, ask every single one of them about God and Jesus, and they all say, fairies. Don't believe it. Doesn't happen. Why would they have billions of dollars? And yet, none of them believe in Jesus. God, why is it they have the billions? Why don't we have the billions, right? God didn't say that was how it's going to be. He said, don't fret, don't worry. Don't wilt because they are blessed right now. Don't lose hope. Hope in me. This is one of my favorite verses of Scripture. 
He says, stop worrying about the riches and delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit my way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring what to pass? He shall bring the joy, the desires of your heart to pass. Stop worrying about the things you don't have and wonder the things that you do have. Well, what do I have, Pastor Cody? You have a loving father. I, Donnie asked me to speak. What's the favorite song I sing? He said, good, good father. Good, good father. I love that song because it reminds me that I have a good, good father who loves me, who cares for me, who's walking with me. Folks, stop worrying about what you don't have. And as you're waiting, stop worrying and start wandering the things that you do have. Folks, we must also, during our waiting, we must still work, and watch, and witness. Luke 12, 35 through 40. This is Jesus. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights be burning. And ye yourselves, like men, wait for their Lord. When he will return from his wedding, that when he cometh, knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are the servants who the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he that shall gird himself and make him to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve him. And if he shall come in the second, or come in the third watch, and find him so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not suffered his house to be broken in. Be ye therefore ready, for the Son of Man cometh in an hour when ye think not. Folks, God is telling us here in this passage of Scripture very, very clearly. Waiting is not just sitting in bed, moaning and groaning. Sitting is not worrying about how evil the days are. I know Miss Jana, you, you, you gave me something. I don't have my phone to read it, but uh, she gave me a poem this morning. I think, I think Bonnie posted on Facebook. Is that right? About raising our children? Oh, yeah. Right? Raising our children. I, I, I had it and I forgot it. I'm sorry, my phone's right there recording the video. Uh, but listen, it was a message that said, raising our children. Not raising our children to stress out or to worry about what's ahead of their future. Well, not any Social Security for my children. Well, the world's just going to go to hell in a handbasket for my children. Stop saying those things, okay? Instead, train your children, train your grandchildren to be strong. Train your grandchildren to have a strong faith in God, to be witnesses for God, to stop worrying about the rapture and start doing something about winning souls to Jesus Christ. Folks, we have to, in our waiting, not just, what is there to do? There's a lot to do. There's a world out there that needs Jesus. There's some work. There's some witnessing, there's some praying, there's some watching that we need to be doing because when Jesus comes, he wants to find his servants not just sitting around doing nothing, but doing what they're supposed to be doing. And God has given each and every one of us a task to do. Two more things before we're done. Wait is spelt hope. W-A-I-T, how do you spell waiting? H-O-P-E, hope. While you're you must have hope. Hope that things are going to turn around and God is going to do it his way. Somewhere along the line, Abraham lost his hope and took things into his own hand and messed up things royally. But then God came back to him and said, remember what I told you, Abraham. And God restored his hope. Folks, we, unlike Abraham, have the written word of God that we can go to every day and we can find what? Hope. Oh, find his promises. Find his presence. And find what he's going to do. Every single one of us has the opportunity every day, not just with the book, but many of you have it on your phones, on your tablets. Tom, I had you, you were put top, helping him with it on his phone, to listen to it on his phone. Every single day of your life, you can listen to the book of Revelation and find out we win. We win in the end. We are victorious. We have a new heaven and a new earth that we get to enjoy. We must, while we wait, have hope. Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what man seeth, what does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we by patience wait for it. I don't see what the next day is going to hold. That's okay. Who does? Who does see what's going to happen tomorrow? Jesus. 
And our hope is not in tomorrow. Our hope is not in our car. Our hope is in Him. And I know that He is going to take care of me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27, 13, 14. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Folks, we must not lose hope. If we lose hope, we must ask God for his help. Bless with a broken heart. Like this passage, I give it up. Folks, we must not live our lives with a broken heart. We must ask God for his help and his hope to strengthen us. Folks, please, this morning, if you're heavy, if you're downtrodden, if you're depressed, if you're discouraged, the Lord this morning and ask for his help. And trust that his hand is going to help you. And that he's going to get you through, and he's going to strengthen you whatever you need. Finally, folks, in our waiting, we must need to stay worthy. Worthy. We must, as the passage of Abraham said, at the end of his life, at 99 years old, God looked at him and said, Wow, Abraham's going to do right now. And may God look and say, Wow, there have been a year out. I need them to continue to be worthy. Psalm 25, 20, and 21. Oh, keep my soul. Deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. While I'm waiting for God to do a great work, I need to continue to remain worthy for him to bless. Abraham got off the path. He wandered. But in that time, he came back. And God began to wander in his life and say, wow, what a wonderful man of God. What a wonderful man of faith who, at, with 99 years old, circumcised his flesh because I told him to. And I know if I could ask him to do that, he's going to do amazing other things. And folks, God giving him Isaac, as we're going to learn next week, isn't the end of Abraham's story. Next week we're going to learn that God had something else to ask of Abraham. Something harder than circumcision. And we're going to see Abraham, God said, do it. And Abraham said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, God. I'll do it. Folks, we need to continue to maintain our worthiness before God. But finally, in closing, folks, determined. We read it. We applied it. Now we're going to make decisions this morning. Determine today that you'll not wait another day to be washed from your sins. Determine today what are you keeping you from believing in Jesus? Today, accept it. Bonnie and Cindy, I think this week, put this verse up there. It goes right away with our sermon this morning. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be what? White as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 1, 8 says, come, come to God. He'll forgive you. No matter how dark, how dirty, how worthless your life seems, God will clean you up. And make you righteous and make you white as snow. Those of us that are saved this morning, determine today that you will not wilt while you wait. You will not wilt while you wait. Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk. And not faint. Determine today that you will find strength in the Lord. That while you wait for Him, you're not going to give up. You're not going to lose hope. Don't just not lose hope, but determine today you'll become a wonder to God while you wait. Just as it is said about Abraham, I know Him. He will command His children, His household after Him. They shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which He has spoken. Abraham, in his 99 years of age, became a wonder to God as he waited. God says, look at his worship. Look at his walk. What a wonderful man. Just like he said of Job. Look at Job. May he say that of our lives. As I wait for God, I'm faithfully worshiping him, walking with him, listening to him. Get washed this morning. Do not melt. And become a wonder for God as you wait for your wondrous rewards. There are rewards waiting for those of us that will be faithful to him day in and day out.
and do what God has us to do. So we're going to close in prayer this morning. And as we pray, here's some things that you need to pray about. If you're not saved this morning, if you're not sure if heaven is your home, then pray right now for God to wash away your sin. Ask Jesus to forgive you. He'll forgive you. It's that simple. Believe that Jesus forgives your sins and he washed them when he died on the cross. And you, as the verse says, will be washed white as snow. If you are saved this morning and you've lost hope, ask God for help. Help me, God. Help me. I'm in pain. I'm struggling. I'm discouraged. I'm depressed. I'm downhearted. Help me. If you are not lost hope, ask the Spirit to lead you to do the things that make God happy. What is it that makes God happy? Singing praises to Him. Praying to Him. Reading the Scriptures. All of these things. Not for my good. Not for your good. But to make what? Him happy. Reverence the Lord. What is it that makes God happy? And I'm going to do and ask the Lord to lead me to do those things. Let's just spend a few minutes in prayer. Talking to the Lord through this time.